Hi and welcome to Magic Academy. Today we're going to look at what's in this package. Welcome to the channel. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at what I got here. This was actually a product intended for a customer that I purchased on Amazon. And you know, it was fulfilled by Amazon. So I was like, well, there's more of a guarantee if I buy from there. Um, <clears throat> and it wasn't open. It was, you know, packaged just fine. This package, the item itself was um, an open box, so to speak. It wasn't packaged. It didn't have any plastic wrapping around it. it I mean, I'll show you in just a second how it came. It's not in bad condition, but you can tell somebody had opened it and went like, no, and probably returned it. Or, you know, somebody in Amazon took off the packaging. I'm not sure why. So let me go ahead and show you what we got. <clears throat> it is a wonderful tarot deck called the Wizard's Tarot. And this is exactly how it arrived to me, which means... As you can see, there's no plastic or anything on it. There's no wrapping at all. It came just like this. So, yeah, you can see that the box has been opened in areas. You know, you can definitely see that it has. Um, <clears throat> but overall, it's still in good condition. And um, I don't own this deck. So while I was on the phone with customer service, I was like, hey, maybe you guys can just offer me a discount then. And, you know, like an open box discount since it was obviously opened um <clears throat> and i'll keep it and they were like sure we'll do that so i got a new tarot deck today for myself and um, i'm still going to get this deck for my customer um you know it's not something that um i was in the market for for myself but you know conditions being what they were i have a new tarot deck um yeah it is a interesting tarot deck as you can see it has some feminine figures um and this is pretty consistent throughout a lot of the the images so it has um a little bit different of idea to the tarot deck having women on the deck so i mean that is pretty nifty um this deck is by corinne kenner Okay, Corinne Kenner has also written some fantasy novels, a couple other tarot decks. This was also illustrated by John J. Blumen. And this is a beautiful deck, absolutely gorgeous. So I have not checked into the meanings behind it, like what's different. You can definitely see some, um, like what era. Huh. It looks modern with an old world style. So, We'll definitely have to see what it's about. Okay, so let's open up the deck. I will say that this deck um, does come with a larger book. This one, you know, of course, is a tarot deck that comes with the small deck booklet. It's about 60 pages, and it's about the size of the cards. But, and I'll show that to you, but there is a set that comes with a larger book. And since it's such a bigger book and an actual book, um, the other set is over a hundred dollars. So this little set is nice to have, you know, of course it's just a booklet that comes with it and we'll go through that as we go through the deck. Okay. So this says body, mind, and spirit divination tarot, become a magical apprentice of Mandrake Academy and learn from your instructor, the tarot based on the Rider weight system. So that's awesome. We know it's Rider weight for easy use. This deck features John J. Bloom's gorgeous, Bloomins, apologize, gorgeous digital artwork. Explore lessons in magic taught by traditional figures from the major arcana. Study of four schools, oh, you get it, the four elements of the four schools of magic that coincide with the four suits of the minor arcana with the included 80-page booklet. Ta-da! to assist your readings. This extraordinary deck will become your constant companion. Okay, so let's take a look at the deck. And there you go. So it's not an excellent little box or anything to hold your cards in. 
So this is what the cover looks like, or the back side of the cards. Very traditional um, alchemy looking kind of cards. And um, they are not super thick. As you can see, they bend extremely easy. So it's a really thin deck. Not that I think that's bad. You know, this is really great for, you know, reading on the go or quick reading or, you know, when you're tired reading. These are awesome. Um, or any time, but just know that it is, they are thinner cards, okay? They're not like really heavy card stock. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So the full, whoops, yeah, this is definitely a deck that has been out of the box because they aren't in order. We start with the Four of Cups, and some of them are upside down. This deck has definitely been returned. So... Yeah, I'm not happy about that, but I got a discount, so that's okay. Let me see if I can kind of get these in order. <laughs> Give me just a second. Okay, so I am back, and um, wow, that deck was completely out of... I mean, there's nothing really damaged. There, This is probably the worst damage I have so far, is this little peeling away on this one card. So for a used deck, but getting it and not knowing that it was going to be used, it's not so bad. Especially getting the discount, you know, paying a used price for it. I'm happy. You know, I'm happy with that. It, You know, I'll definitely clear it later <laughs> and make sure the energies in it are nice. And I'll go ahead and tell you later on, if I remember, um, why I think it was probably returned. You know, some people um, think they want to um, get into tarot. But the meanings freak them out. They're not they're what they're used to in their tradition or their um, Christianity or their belief of in whatsoever. And sometimes it's a little too far of a stretch. You know, even just one card might give them a little too far of a stretch. And they're like, no, this is taboo. And back the deck goes. So, because um, I don't think getting this brand new, I would not have been disappointed in it at all. I would have been very happy with it. Um, I'm you know, very happy, especially considering I got a discount. Okay, so let's look at the booklet together. And I've got these sorted out in the order now that the booklet had them in. The cards were um, completely out of order, you know, just like you would if you'd put a deck back together after really looking at it. So it has ha been handled um, more so than I thought when I originally opened it. I thought maybe the packaging at most had fallen off, possibly had a light owner. But yeah, anyway. Here's the booklet. It is not the 180 page book. This is the booklet. It does give you all the meanings of the cards. A little, nice little welcome. You can get, you know, publisher information, a nice welcome, and, um, you know, a little summary of each card. All these booklets with your tarot decks that come with a deck and booklet are about like this. Some of them do give a few more examples in the back, like reading examples, a little place for notes. This one doesn't. Um, also, it almost forgot the world card altogether, which I'll go ahead and show you here. See how each little card has its title here? And the world card, which is this page right here. Um, after the moon, it's supposed to show the world card. See, there's the moon. There's the moon. And so then next, it's supposed to show the world card. And it doesn't show anything except for right here. How it starts talking about it, but it didn't fit the title in. Probably did that in editing to make the booklet um, readable for some reason, or it was just an accident. Either way, we've caught it. Ha ha, we, we caught something literary. <laughs> Doesn't mean we're smart, but <laughs> oh well. Um, but let's go through these. Okay, so this part here is the Major Arcana. And um, like I said, beautiful imagery, absolutely stunning in imagery. The Initiate is the first one. And if you notice, it is a girl. Totally beautiful. Um, she stands beneath the moon, the new moon. As you can see so this is kind of the stage of the fool anyway this is what stands for the fool card and here she is at her little um, um, hinge you know her little stone circle and um, these cards also have the the symbolism of the Jewish alphabet okay so it has that magical influence 
um, which is kind of nice. None of these cards, though, for the Major Arcana have any numbers. So the Initiate is not shown as number zero. It's not, and that's interesting because it also has the moon, which is a circle, which kind of more defines it as um, that beginning and ending state, that, that in-between state where we're at, um, when we're at the initiate level, just before we begin. Without, before we've had progress, before we started on our path right there. And um, so in a sense, that gives more of a meaning than the number zero anyway. So I think that's totally cool that these don't have numbers just because of that alone. Um, and as you can see, she's surrounded by lots of symbolism. So there's the initiate. Here's the magician. Okay, we have all the symbols. We have the infinity symbol above the head. We've got the wand, and um, she is pointing down to the ground. It is a fem female. It's a femi. It could be a man. I think that's a man. Um, I hope you can see these okay. I really am using a different camera stand right now, so I'm hoping these are these are decent for you. Um, and she has all the tools. So she's got her athame, her cup, her pentacle, her wand. Usually there's two wands. What else? do we have? A second wand. Usually there's, there's a staff along with the card, but this one's just showing the four working tools um, and some, you know, alchemy roses and so on. So there we go. We've got the magician. And the high priestess, isn't that beautiful? A gorgeous moon. We've got the curtains. But if you notice, hers are open. It's not at her feet. I mean, she's actually in a lesson. So, I mean, like, like in the flow of her intuition here. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. We've got the, the curtain open there, the veil open. Um, we have her cat, you know, a lot of the traditional symbolism. symbolism. We have the triple moon um, in a circlet around her head. Absolutely gorgeous. I just love this so much. Beautiful with the purple, you know, very magical colors. Okay, and here we have the Empress, and she appears pregnant, um, and she has the stars around her head. Um, what else? And of course, she's surrounded by abundance. I don't see a shield. Huh. But she does have a cup with the um, symbol on it. Interesting. I don't see a shield, though. Very cool. Fairies. And the Emperor. Very nice. The Aerophant. Hmm. Okay, this is the Aerophant. So this would be the um, your High Council card. Your like Catholic priest imagery is usually used on this card, you know, because it represents um, traditions. It represents, um, what's the word? I guess I could look it up really quick and so on. So he does represent all of the schools, all of the knowledge, um, but not a, not a completely traditional, which is kind of interesting. And here we have the lovers. Oh, look at that. We have a, fe a Femi presiding over the lovers. Hmm. They appear to be in school. Um, I'll have to read. Let's read more about that card. Let's take a look at that. What is that about? Why that symbolism, right, you guys? Huh, here's another instance where we have, maybe I've got this out of, out of order because this was all out of order and there aren't any numbers on it, so it's not. Well, here we are. We're on the lovers. The professor in this card embodies the lyric charm and beauty of the written word she's beautiful and ageless like the like aphrodite goddess of love the lovers can symbolize love romance and marriage a large percentage of spells after all are designed to attract new love renew old love or reunite lost love while an appearance by this couple could encourage any hopeless romantic the lover's card also signifies a choice to be made between Repeating drives and desires. Okay, so you know they have that um, 
competing desire as well, not just a desire of love, but the competition in, in couples as well. It signifies a choice to be made between competing drives and desires. The young lovers in the image illustrate the twin principles of action and reaction, yin and yang, and give and take. Because opposites attract, the two students also offer a study in contrasts. The girl is female and the boy is male. The girl is left-handed while the boy is right-handed. The girl is dark, which signifies the tendency for girls to mature more quickly in love and think more deeply about relationships. So interesting. The boy, on the other hand, is pale and lovesick. So that is pretty cool. <laughs> I love this card, the chariot. What do you guys think? Although, and we do have a sphinx back there. Um, we'll just, you know, we'll have to assume he's already balanced instead of seeing both of the balance. So nifty. Let's look at that. The, the chariot, the professor in this card practice her, the professor in this card. Okay, so here's the thing about this deck I forgot to mention that I read while I was putting these together. The higher arcana these are your professors. This is considered a school and we've all gone back to magic school with this deck. And um, our houses are the four elements, which I read to you. And the major arcana are our professors. So this is our professor here. And um, she practices her art at night when most of the astral travelers are asleep on the other, the verge of sleep or on the verge of sleep she looks beautiful fit and trim but her permanent white hair reveals that she's much older than she appears she's a direct descendant of hecate ancient goddess of the dark moon long ago hecate guided travelers um, at crossroads into places of mystery today the professor of astral travel can guide you through the darkness too the professor professor rides a prov provivial um, which is broom and she wears a pointed hat. She's not afraid to reclaim the word witch, the word rich, or the ancient tools and the traditions of the craft. Okay, so her witch's cat hat is a cone of power and a broom is a magic wand and can sweep away the mundane and take writers on wild flights of fancy and creative imagination. While witches on broomsticks are sometimes shown with cats, Perched behind them, this professor's familiar creature is a pharaoh hound. Awesome. He's a spirit animal who guides beside her, glides beside her in the night. Really cool. This deck is very deep, you guys. It's going to add a lot of meaning to your readings. You know, like, um, especially if you are a magical person practicing magic, not just reading tarot cards. Um, this since it is based on magical schools, you know, the um, ancient magical schools, it's going to touch base on not just the world view of Wicca, but also it looks like ancient Egypt magic and world magic from around the world. So it's going to have some, you know, ancient teachings from a variety of geographical areas. So it's going to be a really cool deck to work with. Okay, here's Strength. Her lion is a dragon, which is really cool. And we are in this month right now, you guys. This is the card for Lunasa, which is tomorrow, by, by the time that I'm doing this reading, 2017. Um, so that's really cool. It's my daughter's card, too, for her birthday. Okay, it illustrates bravery and courage. Um, the professor in this card might seem fearless, but that's not necessarily the case. She'd be the first to tell you that she both fears and respects power of every wild creature. She's learned how to maintain her composure, even in the face of danger. She's also learned that some animals feed on fear. So she refuses to display any hint of vulnerability. Instead, she snatches victory from the jaws of defeat. Astrologically, the strength card is linked to Leo, the sign of the lion. The weaver like all fire breathing dragons is a mythic version of the lion um, whose tail looks something like the leo glyph it's also reminiscent of the figure eight 
the lemnosate about the professor's head, which is a symbol of affinity. Infinity, so you guys can see that. Okay, and then we have the hermit. This has always been one of my favorite cards, you guys. I love the hermit. So this is really cool. He's off in the library. He's by himself. He's on his path. He's got his lamp lighting his pathway. Um, this card usually represents wisdom, prudence, illumination, as well as philosophy, introspection, and mediation. The card also illustrates the concept of solitude and power and silence. The hermit's constant companion is a mouse, a symbol of quiet, watchfulness, observation, and attention to detail. You remember who was the mouse in mythology? One of, book, one of the books behind the hermit is marked with the Hebrew letter Yod, a simple form that looks like a flame. It means hand, and it signifies the hand of God. It's also a form that's incorporated into every other letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The hermit is carrying a book inscribed with the glyph of Virgo, the sign of work, duty, and service. Virgos are hardworking, practice, practical, resourceful, and organized, but they sometimes isolate themselves in an effort to live up to their own high standards. Virgos can be the critical, although usually they are most critical about themselves, but they can be extremely helpful. Once you seek them out, they are more than willing to share the wisdom they have accumulated in their own journeys. So that's cool. It has all, a lot of symbolism. So we'll just go through some of these. Here's the Wheel of Fortune. You know, these are might be nice to have a little bit of surprise when you guys get them. Um, one, two, three, four. Where's the... I guess these symbols probably represent what's usually with that, huh? Then we have Justice. The Hanged Man. Transfiguration. So this is a different name. The Transfiguration card is usually the um, Resurrection card, okay? The Alchemist. Who's usually the Alchemist? Um, temperance. This would be Temperance because he's tempering the um, alchemy, the product there. The Dark Lord. Now, this is the reason why I thought, you know, some, some of these meanings are different. So, and there's not numbers on the cards for these. So I think that's probably why whoever returned this deck probably did for those reasons right there. Um, not understanding that, you know, or not feeling that that was going to be meaningful for them. So, you know, that's the case. But the Dark Lord being the Devil card, um, you know, everything being named differently could really freak somebody out and be like, wait a minute, that's going to ruin my meanings. I'm not going to, you know, um, it's too much to learn even just a few cards different from a traditional deck. So even though they have the same meanings, the name here is different. So that's probably why, um, cause it's a perfectly fine deck. Anyway, take a look at that. He has two toads, um, in chains that would be the male and female that is usually chained to the devil. Um, the chains rep represent the things that bind us that aren't always, that that override our good senses, that we become bound to, <clears throat> like habits, whether they're, uh, that aren't serving us well, that we end up serving instead of serving us and doing good for us. That's basically what that represents. That can be from drugs to relationships to anything dysfunctional. Um, and here's the tower. Is it crashing down or is it just being struck? Appears to just be being struck. No one's falling out of it yet, but that's pretty much you know what the tower is, is a strike, a warning of something striking that could bring you everything down. Um, and here's the star card. It has more meanings than that too, but there you go. And here's the star card. This is my birthday symbol card. I love this card. And I like the fact that it is um astrology egyptian aquarius on there just like it should be it's beautiful beautiful i love it this is serious the largest star within the the star card unless it says otherwise represents serious so totally cool 
usually there's um, water element, which I don't see. I could be missing it right now. Maybe it's like somewhere representative in there. Whoops. And here's the sun card. Usually this is a young, youthful person. He's not too old, but they're usually, they usually have a lot of joy on this card because this, joy rep this card represents joy and success and everything good. Um, judgment. Uh, it looks like test day, doesn't it? <laughs> this professor is a professor of tests. <laughs> you gotta get your owls done. And then here's the moon. All the phases up here. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, oops, oops. And then here's the world. Now this card um, has the symbol of Saturn in it. Um, it has a lot of meaning of Saturn in this card from what I read. Here, I'll read it to you. It's a pretty small little area. <clears throat> okay, this card corresponds to Saturn. The ring planet. The queen wears the symbol of Saturn on a chain around her neck. While Saturn's ring suggests illumination and restrictions, they also delineate boundaries that can help us define our position and relate to other people without losing our own individuality. In other words, Saturn's boundaries don't merely confine us, they define us. Okay, so moving on, we're going to go ahead and go into the wands. Now, here we go. Um, this is something I battle with because I am not, um, this is not my tradition it's not my kind of thing, but not the whole deck, but here we go. Um, here's the wands. There's the ace of wands. What she's saying here is that the ace of wands is a spiritual passion and enlightenment. Is a card of spiritual passion and enlightenment. The wand is a masculine phallic symbol. I disagree. The wand is a feminine tool in magic. So, um... Phallus religions, please look up that word if you don't know what it means. Phallus religions have a tendency to say everything in magic that looks like a stick represents the male and the phallus and that all fertility spoken of in magic represents the fertility of the phallus. And, um, um, you know, the feminine takes such back order to that, but it's all, you know, always talking about, you know, um, human fertility and that's not what it's talking about it's not talking that I, that's not the mainstay in my belief that's not why the sun comes up and goes around the world or you know in our belief why we have the wheel of the year that's not the case um, magic is not in my belief um, supportive of the phallus energy that is where I disagree with a lot of the masculine witches out there that, um, you know, think they know everything about the secrets of phallus magic. Um, yeah, that's not part of my religion. It's not part of my kind of Wicca or my kind of electic Wicca. Um, so I really don't like the fact that she's saying that because that's not the case. The wand is a feminine tool bottom line so um really crazy but anyway let's go ahead and finish reading what she says about the wand um okay so when the ace of wand is present it hints on excitement and insemination um either literal or metaphorical maybe that's the reason why somebody returned this deck because they are not into the phallus religion and they didn't want a deck that reminded them of that of course, I'll clear the energies, and I will read this card how I would read it, um, not with a phallus definition. Um, all the aces represent pure promise and possibility. They hold limitless potential. Seek succeeding cards in each suit are born from the single starting point. So, you know, that really was needlessly pointed in there um, or said in there, but wands are energy they are fire energy 
this represents the element of fire. Aces are beginnings, so this is a beginning energy that um, moves you, that inspires you, that creates in your life. So that's what aces are. The ace of wands would be. Okay, so let's go through the rest of these really quick. We're not going to read them because, yeah, they're going to be phallic related. Um, and although it represent um, prosperity, fertility represents prosperity, um, it's not always, it's not about or based on under the hat or idea of phallus fertility. Okay, that's not the case. Um, that is what um, is called sexist magic, in my opinion. Uh, I believe in the goddess being uh, the primary idea and focus, not the phallus. But anyway, so two of wands. Um, there we go. Three of wands. Well, is this good enough to, for you guys to see it? Three of wands. Very interesting. Your feet are purple. Here's the four of wands. It should be very much so. I don't see any family, but they are celebrating. Huh. Five of wands. There should be some conflict in there. Six of wands. Defending your home, usually. So there you go with the wheat there. Um, seven of wands. Oh, no, that's defending. That one... Is that the one where you're being, you're being celebrated? Okay. The victory ride. And then this is defending your home. Um, a quick happening energy coming into your life. Working for you right now. The nine of wands. Ten of wands. Yeah, the heavy struggle. Um, the page of wands. A messenger. Okay. The knight of wands. Um, a bit of a warrior that is acting on energy for you right now queen of wands um things that have to do with the feminine energies and then the king of wands which are the masculine energies the ruling energies okay so there we go and now we'll get into cups cups have mermaids in this deck so ace of cups let's just see let's go through reading what the aces are what you know, this could be a reason why, too, this booklet is really messed up. It goes from the Six of Wands to the Eight of Cups. So, what is that doing for you? Did they tear out pages? So, the cups are completely missing? Or are they replaced in here later? Ah. Uh. This, this book wasn't put together right. If you could figure out how to do it. Because here's some swords. And then here's the rest of cups. More swords. King of cups is in here twice. Knight of swords is in here again. So this booklet alone is why somebody returned this. You can't get the definitions of what they mean from this booklet. I can see what the problem is. I mean, did you guys see that clearly? It does it on a few pages. Wands, okay, six, then eight of wand, eight of cups. So it's it just jumps. The pages are not where they should be. Swords, cups. See, it's just not correct. It's, you know, cups, swords, not not in the right order so we'll just take a look at these um ace of cups here's beginnings you know mermaids two of cups relationships okay so this is um a new beginning of peace relationships emotions things like that um Two of Cups is the cup that, the, in a love reading, is the one that you want to get because it represents um, being uh, reciprocation, equal reciprocation of the emotional state, back and forth in feeling. 
So if you get this in a business deal, it means it's a good, you know, um, both of you feel good about the business and are going to. Three of Cups, um, Celebrations, and the Four of Cups, Nostalgia, uh, not Nostalgia, but um, Contemplate, uh, compl what's the word when you um, aren't focusing <laughs> um, correctly? You're uh, com Complative, I'm going to have to type that in there, in the bottom, in the description box, but he, he's um, focusing on these cups and totally overlooking this gift that's floating in the sky. Five of Cups, the Six of Cups, Nostalgia card, Seven, Eight, Nine, Ten, Page, Mermaid, Knight of Cups, Queen of Cups, and King of Cups. Like we don't know who that is. Awesome. Okay, so now we'll do swords. This is a beautiful card. I do think that for whatever reason the printer um, maybe in trying to lighten up the, the cards made everything a little bit too green. A little bit too aqua green. But anyway, here we go. We got swords, ace of swords, two of swords, three of swords, four of swords, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, these are, th this is the PTSD card, basically, both of these are eight and nine. Nine is just a more severe state of it, where, um, you're not, what is flipping you out, um, may be an illusion or a memory of the past or something that's not actually binding you or keeping you down. It's not... It doesn't really have a hold on you that you think it may be you may be easier out of it than you realize or it may not even um, it could be like PTSD flashbacks and not even really be binding you anymore so um, it's about clearing your mind and focusing on you know getting over this because the answer really is that this isn't able to harm you now if you don't let it um, ten of swords Page of Swords, Knight of Swords, pretty cool, and the Queen of Swords, beautiful, and then the King of Swords. And lastly, it's not that this is a bad deck, it's a beautiful deck, it's just a little booklet. It's going to make it hard, especially if this is your first deck, guys. You don't want your first deck where you don't know, with cards not being numbered, you know, it, it would be hard to follow. I can see why somebody may have returned it. Um, Ace of Pentacles. This is your Earth card, Earth element. It has to do with the mundane finances. So Ace of Pentacles, two, three, apprenticeship, four, five, the poverty card. Um, help is near at hand. But you have to be willing to seek it, and you have to be able to get that answer. Six of Pentacles, seven, eight, mastering your skill, nine, ten, the page, the knight, the queen, these are all the same little face, and the king. Well, it's the same big face, whichever. These are very interesting. Um, I would have liked to have read that, but I can't find it in order right now. So um, there you go. There's my I, my unboxing of this deck. Let me know what you guys think in the description below. Would you buy it knowing that the booklets are printed the way they are? Um, what do you think of the idea of there's no numbers on the higher arcana or any of the cards what do you think of it being numberless and the difference in symbolisms and the names from the initiate 
to the full. So I'd love to hear your guys' opinion on that. Please comment in the box below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Blessed be. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Also, if you're looking for more, go ahead and click the image in the center. That'll take you to all my playlists. And you can find me on my social media in the description below.